I'm Jennifer Bilbury. This is On Our Minds, a monthly podcast about psychotherapy in Austin, Texas. I think because I work with a a lot of highly sensitive people, that uh, feels like a place that people struggle with, that I struggle with, of knowing what's mine and what's somebody else's. There's no way to know. Yeah. Unless you're in a healthy system yeah. where people are free to talk about everything. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. And we are so. And we just don't der- grow up in a culture bereft yeah. of those kinds of healthy systems. Right. So, not every group therapy is a healthy system. Mm-hmm. But if you find one that is, yeah. and you have leaders who can metabolize all the affect, invite it all into the room, mm-hmm. join with everything that shows up in the room, you create that environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. I, I never made that connection with group therapy. So, so we've talked about the nature of receptivity, right? Okay. And you have the three traits of receptivity, which is empathic entrainment, sensory sensitivity, and somatic knowing. Mm-hmm. The second nature is connectivity. Okay. So now we get all that data in, right, mm. from wherever we got it. And now what our mind does is it makes connections it makes associations Mm -hmm. so we have the trait of associative thinking okay this is metaphor Ah. this is um you know this is like this Mm -hmm. this is putting two things that may seem disparate and making a connection between them like um well water is like a car because they both move okay right Uh associative thinking Then there's also abstract thinking. Mm -hmm. So this is the ability to take one element out of something and make it um, make it something else. So um, artists use abstraction, right? Mm -hmm. It looks like kind of like a tree, Mm -hmm. but it also could be like a feather Mm -hmm. or it could be something else. You know, it's very abstract. So um, highly intuitive people tend to uh, go to the abstract very easily. Um, they go, and so they go to symbol Mm -hmm. very easily. Like $20 is not always $20, Mm -hmm. right? Concrete thinking would say, well, $20 is $20. And intuitive says, well, it depends how much is in my bank account. How much Mm -hmm. do I want to spend it? Mm -hmm. Um, how am I feeling today? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's relative. Mm -hmm. It's abstract. We can abstract money. Okay. Can make it more symbolic. Um, and then the third trait of connective thinking is gener- g- generative thinking, sorry. Mm. So this is the ability to generate lots of possibilities rather than deductive thinking, which is the filter, right? What's the right answer? Uh. Generative thinking is using a lot of associations, a lot of, oh yeah, and then there's this, and then there's that, and what if it could be this, and what if it could be that? And mm-hmm. we're always thinking about all the possibilities. Mm-hmm. And so one idea like snowflakes out into many branches of thought. So we hear like movie trailers are a great example. If an mm. intuitive person is sitting in the movie theater and we start watching the trailer, our mind goes, oh, what if that's going to happen? What if this? It's like oh. we start storytelling with uh-huh. just a few bits of information and then we go, oh, that's not where they were going with that. <laughs> but that was really interesting. <laughs> okay. So um, this ability to take the information and then make even more connections and do even more with it is why intuitive people tend towards feeling overwhelmed oh. and really anxious. Yeah. They have like a brainstorming brain yeah. that's always on and yeah. always making connections, but that also lends itself to innovation, mm-hmm. very creative thinking, new new ways of putting things together. Mm-hmm. So that's the second nature, connectivity. Okay. Right. The third nature is visionariness, which okay. I think is a very cool word that yes. no one uses. <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> an ability to, the first trait in visionariness is envision. So somebody who can envision something that doesn't exist. Okay. They can envision what the past was, like what it looked like. Like think about Mad Men and building the sets and uh like recreating a world that you didn't actually live in. Mm -hmm. Then you have the um, future oriented envisioning, which is what we're most familiar with, but it Mm -hmm. can also be like 
inventions and、mm. new science and new breakthroughs in med- medicine and、okay. the ability to take all that data that you've connected and now make meaning out of it. Okay. To create significance to the patterns that your brain is imagining. The second trait under that is. Contemplativeness.、Mm. So, highly intuitive people are very contemplative. They want to know why.、Mm. They want to look at beyond the facts to the deeper meaning or、mm-hmm. the deeper significance of the patterns、mm-hmm. that their mind is perceiving. And then the last one is a passion for significance.、Mm. So, this is somebody who really likes.、Um, like、Steve Irwin's a good example. Somebody who really likes.、Um, Feeling something very intensely and having、uh, a transcendent experience, like through trance or meditation, or it could be drugs, it could be storytelling,、okay. right? But、mm-hmm. they're seeking、um, significance、mm-hmm. in the data that they're perceiving, and they want people to transform or change or be inspired. I'm just thinking about how helpful it could be for people with a lot of anxiety、uh, to hear this frame. Yes, it is. It's 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 so, so healing. Yeah, it's so validating. Right. Yes,、and、it's so validating. So when I present this at conferences, people will come up and they'll say,、oh, I "Like I I get it now. I get who I am. Yeah. But also, I kind of get my partner." And I get that of these nine traits,、mm. they have these, and I have these.、Mm. So the poet is more likely to have that empathic entrainment,、mm-hmm. um, sensory sensitivity, somatic knowing, the very receptive,、mm-hmm. right? But sometimes the person who's tapped down their sensitivities, amped up. Their passion for significance,、oh, their envisioning, their、uh-huh. connectivity. Uh huh. So it, you know, it's like they still have all those traits in there, but it's just maybe different mixtures. Yeah. Of the traits. So yeah. yeah, very validating, and it's. I think it's terrible that this model has not existed. Yeah. That, that this isn't、um, talked about. This isn't normalized. No, I mean the first time I heard about it was from you and on your website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then、um, the other thing that's important just to talk about when we're talking about highly intuitive people is how invalidated we are. Okay.、Um, that this and I call it the invalidation wound. Uh huh. Yeah, I heard you present on this early. Yes.、Mm-hmm. And starts with being a little kid. And having some kind of information in your family、mm-hmm. that your family didn't want you to have, maybe you sense mom and dad had a fight, or、uh-huh. one of them is sad, or、yeah. something. And you, as a little kid, you've just enough language to say, "Mommy, why are you sad?" Yeah. And mommy, in says, an effort to reassure us, I'm not sad. Says, "Oh, honey, no. See, I'm fine. fine." And then you get this. Crazy making. What the? Yeah. What do I do with all of the somatic knowing or this way I'm getting this information? Yeah. And you're in charge of my survival. Right. So I have to believe, believe you. you. So I have to put this away somehow. Yeah. And that's where we get that wound, and it creates a lot of very negative adaptations for highly intuitive people. Okay. So we are overrepresented in. Eating disorder clinics,、yeah. alcohol, drug treatment centers, sure.、Um, Any so, addiction, probably. Right, because、yeah. we have to find a way. Well, this, so the way to think about this is when you have an invalidation wound like that, and now you have to start paying attention to external sources、mm-hmm. of information, right? More than internal sources, right? So I call it being externally organized.、Mm-hmm. So now I have to ask you, well, what color is、yeah. that? What or, should I do? Or Michelle, am I the right weight? Am I the right weight? Yeah, All of that, you,、yeah. and we start looking for external、yeah. ways of measuring、right. that we're okay.、Mm-hmm. The scale.、Mm-hmm. Um, it could be finishing my plate. It could、uh-huh. be.、Um, How much money is in my bank account?、Yeah. How many friends do I have on social media? What do you think of me right now? Right. It could just be anything in the external environment is now my compass. Yeah, and of course, I'm going to get different directions from different people. I'm going to feel lost. I'm going to start to develop a lot of loneliness. Yeah, 
feeling different, yeah. feeling misunderstood, being often told I'm too sensitive uh -huh. or the way I think is not appropriate a in school. One. Yeah. And so I get invalidated outside of the family. Maybe it didn't happen inside the family. Maybe it just happened when I went to school and mm -hmm. I noticed my teacher seemed sad mm -hmm. or the kids next to me were, you know, their parents are going through a divorce and I picked up on that, but they weren't talking about it. I mean, yeah. It's, we're steeped yeah. in invalidation. Yeah. And then we have to become externally organized to get data to on survive. how to be good and yeah. how to be right, yeah. how to survive. So one way to adapt to that is to become very dependent on material things to tell me I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Another way to adapt is to get people to tell me I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So codependency, mm -hmm. right? Another way is to numb it out. Mm-hmm. That's the uh, addiction. Mm -hmm. And another way is to become like antisocial and not care what anyone thinks. Oh, interesting. And become completely um, isolated, yeah. almost um, uh, like, uh, what's the term? Schizoid. Like, oh, yes. Like just uh -huh. no information's coming in. Yeah. Right? And so I lose my relational capabilities yeah. be to protect my sensitivity. Mm-hmm. So those are just the four main ways people adapt to the invalidation wound. I think it's more like people who are, who've had to protect themselves and bury their sensitivities that would be, would not identify with HSP because they have an aversion to sensitivity that will maybe find a home in this identity in I was and move towards this. In, understanding their own sensitivity. As you were talking, I was thinking this, that when some people come into my office and I'm thinking they're highly sensitive, but there's something in me that knows uh, that's not going to be okay to say or to have in the family system right now. Well, and a lot know, of the men I work with are, um, they're, if they're engineers or whatever, uh -huh. they, you know, they're rewarded for their logical and linear exactly. side and this sensitive, empathic side that, it gets lost, but over time in group, uh, they become really, uh, you know, they demonstrate a lot of empathy and mm -hmm. they read people accurately and they get that feedback mm -hmm. and they start to reclaim this part of themselves that they awesome. may have felt a little out of sync with. I think not only for men do are they so rewarded for like this logical side, but also, um, I see it a lot, that not knowing even when they're hungry. Like being so disconnected from bodily sensations that it's hard to know, I need to eat right now. That's right. Well, that's that external organization. Ah, okay. Yes. Right? Okay, that makes and sense. And that, that yeah. the, the individual has to journey back to reclaim their internal sense mm -hmm. of knowing. Yeah. Right? And that, that's, that's what real recovery from an eating disorder is. Mm is really reclaiming that connection. So Anita mm -hmm. Johnson's work, Eating in the Light of the Moon, uh -huh. uh, really yeah. she was the one who inspired me really? on my whole journey. Okay. Yes. Yeah. She, she is the one who she really helped me understand that she found that people in eating disorder in her clinics, the one thing they had in common was not trauma, like how she thought it would be, sure. because that was really the training of the time. Mm -hmm. But it was actually that they're all very highly intuitive. Wow. And that it was being denied knowing oh, what their gut was telling them. Uh -huh. Right? That started making them rely on external sources for, am I hungry? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Michelle, thank you so much. This yes. was fascinating. Um, if people want to learn more about high, high intuition, high, being highly intuitive, um, where can they find you? At michellebowles.com. Okay. B-O-H-L-S. That's right. Dot com. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for interviewing me. I'm Jennifer Bilbrey, and this has been On Our Minds, a monthly podcast about psychotherapy in Austin, Texas. 